Good evening, everyone. It's uh, 6.30 on uh, Wednesday, April the 10th. <coughs> Welcome to everyone. As we let folks into the meeting, welcome to everyone here in the room. Nice to see you all. Um, uh, just want to say on the folks that are coming online, I want to be very clear that we need to see your first and last name on the screen. Um, and uh, good. It uh, looks like we're in pretty good compliance yeah. there. Good. Great. All right. We will um, start the meeting off with rules of procedure and ask Chip to read those. Sure. The select board is required by law to conduct its meetings in accordance with the Vermont Open Meeting Law, which is 1 BSA 310 to 314. Meetings of the select board must be open to the public at all times, except as provided in 1 BSA 313. At these meetings, the public must be afforded reasonable opportunity to give its opinion on matters considered by the select board, so long as order is maintained. Such public comment is subject to the reasonable rules established by the chair of the select board based on 1 VSA 312H. As written in the current edition of the Secretary of State's Guide to Open Meetings Handbook, quote, the public comment period is not a free for all. The board chair may establish reasonable rules to maintain order and reasonable limitations on the amount of time for each speaker are not unusual or improper. So let's have a constructive meeting and a civil one. Thank you, Chair. Yeah. Thanks very much. All right, we'll move on uh, into the agenda. <clears throat> there are no community comments this evening, I understand, from the That's right. So thank you. We'll move on then to changes to the agenda order, and there is a, 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 a change we need to make um, based on urgency, uh, and we will learn more about it this evening, but uh, that we need to, the select board needs to uh, provide a notice of vacancy. Uh, meaning uh, in an elected office, and we need to go through that this evening. So we will do that. Uh, if, if everyone's comfortable, we'll do that as the first item under new business. All right? So um, we need to make that change this evening. So good. Uh, we need to then move on, and we'll go ahead to the approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. This is the March 25th meeting, um, and I... We've all seen those minutes, so I'll take entertain a motion to approve. You know? So moved. Thank you, Michael. Is there a second? Yeah. Thank you, Brenda. All right. Is there any discussion here at the select board about that? <clears throat> all right. Uh, so, uh, me since we're hybrid this evening, we will uh, take the roll. So, uh, Tara, are you in favor of passing the minutes? Aye. Thank you. Uh, aye. Yeah, aye. my time. Brenda? Aye. And Zon says aye, so those are approved. Thanks very much. All right, we will then move on in the agenda to updates and reports, and we'll um, invite uh, Erica at this point to give us a town administrator report. Okay, hello everyone. Um, I just want to let you all know that the Green Up Day bags arrived today at the town office, so um, Green Up Day is May 5th, I think. And so we're busy getting ready for that. That's really exciting to me. It's a real sign of spring. <laughs> um, another sign of spring for me is that I'm getting notifications about bicycle events. And the one I'm going to tell you about just now, if I can find it, is called the Guilford Gravel Grinder. Um, and that is all That's in so Guilford, cool. and it starts on Hinesburg, yeah, uh, Sunrise Farm on Hinesburg Road, and it, I think it's about a 40 mile ride, and it's just all through Guilford, and it's going to be on June 29th this year. So look for that. Um, registration is already open for that bike ride. Um, Something else I've been doing is working with the town treasurer to, um, we are exploring online payment possibilities wow. for taking payments to the town. So that's Very in development. Cool. Yeah, um, definitely in development. And as soon as we know something that sounds good, we'll let the select board know about it. Um, a few months ago, I think it was in December, the select board approved um, application for a grant for uh, culvert work on Slate Rock Road, a very large culvert, which is a 
capital asset in the town, and it's a pretty big job. Um, Guilford has been selected to receive that grant. We haven't accepted it yet. That's still in process. Um, next step is that Danny and I and um, Linda Regional will create a project plan and a budget to present to the select board, and that's when we can decide whether Guilford will accept that grant or not. But that's a pretty nice uh, federal grant that comes through the state, and um, they're really proud right now that, that, that there's a little bit of extra federal money coming our way for our highways. So. Good news all around. And one last notification for everybody. Next Monday, the 15th, is the last day to get your homestead declaration in. Um, even if you're filing an extension on your income taxes, the homestead declaration is due on the 15th this year. That's it. All right, thank you. It was great that <clears throat> there's signs up about it to help remind people yes well that was ellie made made some signs because our electronic sign is in the shop both of them oh. so oh really <laughs> so danny went and i think he is going to get one early i see i saw that the other ones coming here to the meet no i saw the one the handmade one yeah, yeah. Well, great. Right, good. yeah. Um, i see susie is online uh susie can you uh reveal uh Type your last name on the screen as well, so we it's, can have it for our records. It's and Susie then, West. W E S T. This, you know that? Okay, yeah. thank you. Right, Not never, the dentist. Never mind, Susie. We've got it. We know who you are. Then thanks very much. Um, okay, um, let's see. Dan's not here, so we won't have a. Is there anything? Um, uh, nothing. Nothing extra special. Of course, <clears> we had a big snow again last week, <throat> and they they dealt with that beautifully. Um, I wanted to add something, which is that the UPS truck came flying up our hill, and the driver, Constantine, said that Guilford has the best roads on any of his route, and the difference is like night and day. So <laughs> I wanted great. to pass that along <laughs> to Dan. Good. Bravo, Dan. Good. Thank you. Okay. Um, Dan Fox, we will... Uh, 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 throughout the course of the year, beginning uh, in March, we have a schedule of uh, updates and reports from which we will hear um, from the organizations that the select board is connected to in the town. And tonight we have the pleasure of talking to the Planning Commission. So, uh, yeah, come right up. Good evening. Hi. Hi. Jeanette Tokar is if people don't know who I am, chair of the Planning Commission. Let's see. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And you can sort of, you know, divide yourself right. between us and them. I so, guess. and be mindful of the time a lot. I'm going to give a quick overview and hopefully leave some time for questions at the end. So, um, the Planning Commission's charge is to help implement the town plan. We have a very ambitious town plan with multiple goals and uh, things that we would like to achieve. Um, for 2024, we will be working on trying to implement some of the high level goals. We've been wor the, our work with the strategic planning consultant is wrapping up. In the next month or so, we'll have a well-developed document as well as a spreadsheet that lists several goals, strategies, and actions. Um, so we look forward to a really very activist year coming up in 2024 and beyond. Um, one of the ways in which we would like to proceed with our work is that as a seven-member commission, there's no way that the seven of us could implement all of the goals and strategies. So um, what we're proposing to do is use advisory committees to carry out the work of um, the, the goals within our town plan. And I believe the ARPA committee was an advisory committee when it was formed. So there's a, um, a precedent for forming advisory committees. And tonight I'm coming before you to request that the select board authorize the formation of two advisory committees. Um, and I earlier today sent Erica a background documents uh, that reference this, the relevant state statute, just so you know that we are mindful of statute, and especially are mindful that these committees 
do need to be in compliance with all aspects of open meeting law. So I want to reassure everyone from the get-go that we want to be conducting the business with transparency, you know, making it available to members of the public to attend in whatever capacity they choose. So, questions so far? Okay. So the two committees that we are um, requesting be um, both adopted tonight as well as the membership appointed <coughs> are first the Algiers Village Traffic Calming and Safety Committee. Yes, that's a mouthful. All right. And their mission is to work on behalf of the town to con both conceptualize as well as implement a project to improve traffic safety in Algiers Village, uh, specifically focusing on the, the awful intersection we all know, know and hate, the intersection of Route 5 and Guilford Center Road right at the store. Um, that's a particularly problematic intersection. Um, we would like, the, the group really wants to narrow their focus on that specific intersection. Um, as stipulated in the statute, uh, we have to appoint a chair and a clerk. Eric Morse has agreed to serve as chair. Clerk Erica Elder to add to her ever-growing list of things to do. Um, Sheila Morse and Jean Aceman will also serve. Um, we have really wonderful support from Colin Bratton at Wyndham Regional. Um, Dunham Rowley wants to participate as well, but he's not a resident of Guilford, so by statute he can't be appointed to the committee. Okay. Shall I move on to the next committee? Yes. Okay. We're going to take care of those in a later moment. Okay. Um, the second committee is the Trails Committee, and their purpose is to develop a recreational trail system within the town for non-motorized users. Um, the intent is to both um, utilize existing trails, class four roads, legal trails, and where feasible, develop new trails. The trail network within Guilford um, ideally would expand to other, or connect to other municipalities uh, where appropriate. Uh, we, Trails Committee is very aware that the majority of land within Guilford is privately owned, hence the creation of any new trails um, will absolutely respect landowner goals and wishes. Um, and fortunately for the Trails Committee, there's a lot of available resources about best practices for developing trails as well as trail maintenance and management. Um, there's also local expertise that we're utilizing from the Wyndham Regional Commission. And the Natural, Vermont Natural Resources Council um, has lots of robust materials, including a, um, a trails handbook that was developed by the town of Underhill that really goes through step by step how to um, talk to landowners, how to create a trail steward. So I feel like we have a lot of um, rich resources to help us as we move through this process. Uh, developing trails for Guilford. Uh, chair is Alec Dosen. Myself as clerk, although anybody else who wants to take on that role, please contact me. Um, members at this point, Dale Brissett, Teresa Brissett, Marion Kidd, and Karen Murphy. Uh, many more people are on the email cha chain and show up, but these are the people who uh, are willing to be appointed at this time. Okay. Thank you. Are there Thanks. any questions here for Jeanette? Oh, I have a question. Um, based on the work of the ARPA committee, the, uh, the committee did a whole lot of outreach to people mm -hmm. who weren't part of the committee to get input from them. And are we to understand that these committees will also do that? So if people hadn't been appointed to the core committee, they would still have a chance to have broad input into what's going on. That would absolutely be my hope. And yeah. so one of the um, ways to do that, of course, is to, because we're gonna be complying with open meeting law, agendas will be posted on paper throughout town. Um, we'll also have the meetings available um, via hybrid, and also everything will be put on Front Porch Forum. So, and also be in the town calendar, um, all the meeting minutes will be in the town website. So we really want to make sure that this is uh, open and accessible. And really, the more input we have, the better our work will be. Mm -hmm. so, thank you for the question. Great. 
has the day and time and frequency been established yet, or is that to be determined? Or low location, I should say. So the town, so <clears throat> for the moment, the town, the trails committee has been meeting here on the third or fourth Wednesday, depending upon scheduling. Um, it has been hybrid. The Algiers Village Traffic Calming and Safety Committee has been meeting at the Guilford Country Store on the second level. Um, we don't. I don't think they have set a specific meeting frequency. Mm -hmm. Probably every month at this point. I think Thursdays. Mm -hmm. Kind of depends on who's available. When. Jeanette, I believe that at the last meeting. Yeah. They, oh, sorry. You would know more. Uh, than yeah, that. we we talked about. Uh, third Mondays okay. here at the town office, actually, oh, fabulous. in the morning. So Great. We'll see if that works out. Thank you. Thank you. Great. I'm excited to hear about how the Trails Committee will inter <coughs> interface with the other uh, the, the, the uh, other trails that already exist in the community, not just the walking trails, but the, the snowmobile trails and the other sorts of trails. So that'll be a fascinating uh, conversation, I hope. Yes, yeah. so I think we want to emphasize that this is for non-motorized users, recognizing that there's a robust, vast, as well as FASA trail system, and we'd love to collaborate with both of those groups um, as, as, as appropriate. You know, a lot of that's landowner dependent, and we don't want to always be mindful that landowner um, preferences come first. Great. Okay, thank you very much. Right. Well, thanks, Jeanette. Thanks a lot. Okay, then we move on, folks, to the, uh, we have a report this evening from the elected auditors. We'll start with Kathy. What up? Hi, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. I'm going to forget. Oh, good. Okay. I want to tell you that we are successful completion of the town report. <laughs> we had about 10 meetings beginning in December, <clears throat> and our goal was to get the TAN report in the mail by the end of February, by the end of February, February 20th, and I think we just squeaked by, people barely got it. Mm -hmm. um, so the things we did to get the report ready, we met with the town staff, um, Erica and Ellie and Danielle, we developed a work plan and that started from town meeting date and worked back to the date we were at. We developed a matrix to keep track of the whole process and wrote down who did what at what time and when it got into the book and how many times it got proofread. Mm -hmm. A lot of times. Um, we discussed concerns about reporting funds and mailing problems. Um, and we decided that the breadth of the report was, the financial portion of it is July 1st, 22, through June 30th of 23. But everything else was a report of the calendar year, so that there was some slight confusion about especially about deaths. Deaths and births and marriages are reported during the fiscal year and not calendar year. It gets confusing. So we have to work on that one. Um, and of course, we discussed the dedication, which is our favorite part, and we, we keep it a secret until the very end. Um, we divided the task, went through the report literally page by page, and who does what and when, um, planned for the printing, got quotes, made decisions, and then assigned writing tasks. And of course, in the midst of all of this, we had to chase down missing reports because we figured that's really important, all the reports of all the town activities that are going on. And it's like shaking people like, the people from the library, they're always late with their report. <laughs> and of course, we did tons of proofreading. And we um, collected lots of photographs from everyone in town. So everyone participated. Um, 
we responded to individual an individual request for information. Um, and as we were reviewing it, we decided we were really happy, although we had problems with the mailing, because we really messed that up, partly because of the mailing list. And we promised to work on that first instead of last. Mm -hmm. At the end, it gets very tight. Mm -hmm. So we're going to work on those mailing lists. Um, we, as a whole, use information prevent, presented by the professional auditors. We didn't audit the professional auditors. They, we let them do their job. And um, do you have anything you want um, to add? Yeah. Um, Come forward, Paul. Yeah. Paul Bellagor, Don Auditor. Um, I guess I'm just going to kneel. How about that? Right? <laughs> yeah. There's a chair right here. Yeah. No, it's right. We've got chairs. Okay. Yeah. Right here. Might as well do that. Um, um, yeah. So I do have um, something to add here. Uh, this is the town report that um, Katya and I and um, Leslie uh, put together. Um, it does take some efforts uh, to get this done. Um, it's 84 pages. There's a lot of uh, creativity that goes into it. It's not only understanding the numbers, but also getting information from every department and putting it together. Um, designing of this report is one of the um, qualities or one of the um, tasks that somebody has to have uh, if we uh, uh, continue to do this. Um, so doing just simple paperwork takes a lot of time. That's one thing. Uh, the other thing is, I guess there's a, a number of concerns from uh, uh, citizens here um, that uh, the town auditors are not doing the job that um, uh, as described in the um, uh, comprehensive guide of elected auditors. Um, I think the town elected um, to hire professional services. Right. So this report uh, is done by the professional services. Uh, we compile, we put it together. Now, um, do we have the ability or the know-how to audit the uh, professional auditors? I think it would be kind of uh, uh, ineffective uh, from my point of view. Um, it, it probably, you know, none of us have the skills um, that I know of uh, to uh, sit down and question uh, what the auditors did. Um, now, if we were to put that report ourselves at the beginning of time, maybe we could have had a better input, but we are taking numbers that are given to us by the professional auditors. So we have to trust their professional skills. Otherwise, why would we hire them to start with? Um, so what I wanted to add is that um, I think the, uh, the way uh, the, uh, the town auditors currently operate, um, uh, doing their job and come, coming up with, with this report. Um, from my point of view, we've done a uh, maximum amount of, uh, uh, we'll put a maximum amount of efforts to get this done. Um, now, can we do more? Well, the, there's always, the answer is yes. You know, um, of course we could. Uh, maybe um, going forward, uh, we will sit down with Kathy and find out what else we could do to, uh, to make this report better. Or perhaps, for that matter, uh, satisfy some of the concerns from the uh, from the citizens. So, whatever proposals are, whatever questions they might have, we might address them. Uh, by the way, they can address them uh, directly with us um, during the the meetings, right, Patty? That we can uh, set up. Um, they can participate over the Zoom call, or for that matter, send us an email. So um, that's from me. Okay. Oh, yeah, I mean, I think it's, uh, if we were talking earlier about with the Planning Commission and setting up new committees, um, the, the elected auditors are also coming to the open meeting law requirements. So your meetings are open to the public, uh, they're yeah. published, they're, they're known, and there are records of all of those that are kept. And so um, same in the same fashion as the select board meetings as well. So, yeah, good. So. Um, um, I have one thing which is that Leslie is resigning. Yes. And Leslie is responsible for the beauty of this book. 
Uh, right. Oh. So that's kind of was the thing. We, you know, whoever going to come next, uh, they might not have the skills. Neither Kathy and I, we have skills to put this together. We could do this, you know, but it's not going to look the same. Right. Mine would look like the one I did, which right. was black and white. And so um, there are services that can help us to do this. Uh, and we might actually look at, you know, spending some money for one of this quality. Because I just don't believe that uh, there's anybody in this town, well, maybe there is somebody better than Leslie, but she had unique abilities. She actually knew what she was doing, mm -hmm. plus putting this report together in this format. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. And yes. we hope you'll um, um, appoint someone who has skills that we don't have in making the book. Yes, we're going to be dealing with that a little bit later in the meeting, talking about that, talking through that for the town. So because there's a there's a set of steps that the select board are uh, required to take by statute. So yeah. Now I think with Kathy and I, we can uh, we, we suggest we might set up another meeting, uh, probably uh, in the next few weeks. Okay. Right, um, and, and invite people. Invite people to, to address their questions. concerns. Okay, and then, then we can take those concerns into consideration. We can also look at the comprehensive guide see what uh, shortages we might, you know, have personally here, and then figure out what, what we can do better okay, for the yeah. town. Are there any, any questions here from the select board? And for Thank you for your service. Yeah, yes. yeah. Really Thank you. yeah really it really was an extraordinary um, book. I showed it to people from other towns, and they were really impressed with its readability. I mean, just how well uh, complex information was synthesized and uh, I felt really proud of what you did as auditors. Yeah. My goal has been to make it a book that people want to read mm. so they will read it. And mm. it's hard to do that when it's just a bunch of print. Mm. But, if, but if it's presented like that, mm. I heard a lot of people reading it and as a matter of fact, I best Danielle to put it on the counter for people who are moving to Gilford to find out what they need to know about living in this town. Yeah, I think it's an impressive effort with an amazing amount of hours that go into it. It is, and yeah. uh, what what Caddy just said, was, which is interesting, uh, as we go, you know, as we, uh, you know, move on, and you know, people, you know, in the future want to go back and look at this report, they're actually well done. Um, and they've been, you know, you can read them as a book almost. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, yeah. it's kind of, there's a lot of historical value to this, right? All right, well, thank you very kindly. I see hands in the audience, and I'll just ask you folks, if you have questions for the auditors, please just to speak with them directly. If you have questions for us, then you can uh, have those at another time. We won't take time now, Tammy, I'm sorry. Thank you. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. So we'll move on to uh, old business, uh, which is the, the point at which we'll address issues, the select board will be addressing issues that uh, we have looked at before. The first one is to authorize a signature for the professional audit, which uh, will be used for the next town report. Um, I just want to state here that um, uh, at, we, uh, the select board um, uh, had this on its agenda at the last meeting. There was a citizen who uh, felt very strongly that we were ill-advised to move forward uh, because there was a claim that we were not uh, in compliance with our own policy. Uh, in fact, that citizen was incorrect. We were we were actually in complete compliance, um, and uh, if we just if you read the policy, it states right in there that um, under the services the services uh, the professional services aspect of the of the uh, policy that the select board can uh, not seek uh, not put the job out to bid if we're using high level professional services such as auditing. So. Following our own policy, we will, in fact, now move forward to, uh, to authorize the signature for tonight. And that signature needs to be by one select board member, uh, probably should be me. So I would entertain a motion that we, um, uh, that, uh, that the, uh, that I be authorized to, um, I'll move, I'll just do it, how about that? I'll move that, I'll just move it simpler. I move that the select board appoint, uh, authorize me to sign the uh, uh, letter of agreement with the professional audit uh, firm for fiscal year 24. Yeah, I second that. Thanks, Chip. All right, is there any further discussion here among the select board members? Okay. 
All right, is there any comment in the community? Ken. Hi, Timmy Sergeant, Creamery Road. Um, I'm wondering if it would make sense to yet again table this. I don't know what your deadline is as far as having to do this signature, but listening to Kathy and Paul say that they're going to have an auditor's meeting in the next week or two weeks or whatever it's going to be. And the reason I'm thinking it might not be a bad idea to table it and, and let them maybe look into options that they might be able to provide us is five years ago, our professional audit cost us $7,400. This year, it cost us over 20000 almost 21000 mm -hmm. five years later. Mm -hmm. We're only budgeting 15000 for the professional audit, which is kind of weird to me just looking back through the years. But for the amount of money that we're spending on a professional audit, and there are times that the professional audit isn't even available by the time they have to have a town report put together, so that's not beneficial. We had March of 22, the end of March, the professional audit was finally finished. So I think it would be good to listen to what Kathy and Paul might come up with for an alternative. So if there's no urgent deadline on signing a, a letter with the professional auditor, I would say table it yet again. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So uh, I see Jason's hand. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I'd have to agree with Tammy. Um, I don't see the urgency in this. Uh, I don't understand why you would not just put it out for a competitive bid just to see if there was an opportunity for another contractor to come in and come in at a less price. I don't see the urgency in this. And as Tammy just mentioned, if the auditors are meeting again, uh, our auditors um, want to try and do something about this, why not let them, why not let that happen first before you sign this letter of agreement for apparently that's more money than we've already budgeted. Thank you, Jason. Thanks very much. Okay. Let's see, is there any further conversation here that we need to have? All right. Uh, I, I asked some questions. It, can you can you answer those? I mean, is there urgency? Thank you, Jason. Um, the our budget um, is sixteen thousand five hundred, and that is that is the contract price that we've we've arranged with the budget. So, in other words, it's not twenty two thousand. Yeah. It is not. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. Quick question again. Um, can you tell me what we budgeted for nope, 2023? Can't tell you that right now. Can't tell you that right now. So can the price go up? So I mean, you're you're saying that you're gonna sign it for the 16, whatever you just said. Is that carved in stone? It will not cost more than that. It can't cost more than that. Uh, this is an agreement, a letter of agreement. This is not a contract. We, yeah, so this is this is the first step in that. So it's not we're not committing to anything financially in this. This is a letter of agreement. So, all those in favor? Uh, let's see, wow. Tara. Are you? Do you have a question? I do have a question. I would. I'm. I'm just thinking that if, if we were to entertain another auditing firm, might it take longer because they're not used to working with us? Similar to a, an accountant, when you have a, an accountant and you give them all your stuff, they have records of everything. So it's kind of like exchanging numbers, but having the line items there. And I would think that a brand new firm, we might pay more because it would be additional hours trying to find information. Yeah, Any thoughts on that? I agree. I think it would also extend the deadline in terms of trying to get everything ready by the town and pre and town and town meeting as well, because it would extrapolate out the work even further. <clears throat> and, and did we, once again, did we go over budget last year? No, no, no. Okay, so and we're budgeted at sixteen thousand, mm -hmm. which is only a thousand more than last year, which is a thousand. I mean, yeah. I mean, I heard our um, the two auditors who came here saying that. I mean, they're volunteers, and they have neither the skill set nor the inclination to do this. And even as I said at the last meeting, in the VLCT handbook. That was the outdated handbook from about 2008 or 2009. 
they, uh, they spoke about how town finances have become so complex that they had a, uh, a sort of a recommendation for towns that oh. wanted to, to abolish the role yeah. of citizen auditors. And I feel as if we've gotten the benefit of an incredibly dedicated group of people with amazing skill sets. You know, these are people who I have tremendous respect for, and they've dedicated themselves to creating something that's so special for Guilford. Mm -hmm. And it's that partnership of having a firm that we trust and the volunteers who are willing to extend themselves for the town that just has made up my mind. I don't, yeah, I would agree. Plus, I think that just to reread the professional service, it, there's, there are so many reasons that are built into this, a myriad level of reasons, but and especially given what Chara just said and her business acumen and, and the business acumen of people here with Michael and his engineering service, but the bid process shall not apply to the, select of prop, to the selection of providers for services that are characterized by a high degree of professional judgment and discretion, including legal, financial, auditing, risk management, and insurance services. And all of those are logistically difficult to just jump in cold on, and nor is it something you're gonna to wanna to bid out. You wanna to try to find the most highly qualified, competent firm, which I think Guilford has had. And as Miranda said, it's a business. Guilford is now a $2 million corporation. It's a business, and you need a professional firm to handle the accounting of that business. Any further comments here at the select board? No. Way. Yes. Tammy. Oh, sorry, Tara. Okay. I'm not opposed um, to waiting. Um, I, I don't think, I'm not sure what kind of information we're going to glean from it, except to allow the town's people to ask questions of the auditors, which is what they're asking to do. So if it doesn't change our timeline, I'm not, I'm not opposed to that especially when people want to do it. But I think that it should be a civil discourse and not a finger pointing, blaming type of situation. I don't see. I, uh, I think it, it, this would delay um, our audit. Um, it is scheduled to begin in May. Um, our Bonnie has made, made a plan to show up sometime in May to start her work here. Um, and I think that delaying it in case we might find somebody else or it, it's frivolous um, yeah I, I would yeah I think based on what you're what 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 that that timeline information for me I think that these discussions are really fine discussions that might want to be had for a next year another another year of consideration start them much sooner and uh, go ahead but we are bumping up against I I, I know that uh, as you said, that the, the, the auditors are already making uh, appointments, and uh, I have one scheduled with the auditor early on, um, in, in the very um, at the end of the month. Yes, uh, a couple things. One of the points Tara had pointed out, she thought a new auditing firm, it might take them longer to compile the information. But like I said, the auditing firm we have been working with for many years um, took nine months to produce the audit in 2022. The other point I wanted to say, Tara also asked, did we go over budget last year on our professional audit? And everyone said no. But in the town report, it says we budgeted $15,000, but we spent almost $21,000. So the answer is actually yes. We did go over budget. Uh, Tammy, I'm not sure. I think that, that, that you might be, uh, I don't know the answer. So these are the kinds of things you probably won't talk about here. I understand it's right there, yes. But that's that. there might be other numbers that are in there beyond what the contract is. And that might be what makes up the difference. I'm just suggesting it's, as a possibility. Uh, for way It's a one line item, professional audit. Yeah, I, I hear you, totally I hear okay. you, absolutely hear you, yeah. So, all right, all given all of this, uh, so let's take a vote here. Can so, we just repeat the motion. The motion is Go that on. the select board authorize me to sign this letter of agreement for the professional audit engagement contract. Tara, are you in favor? Aye. 
Aye. Chip uh, Michael? Aye. Uh, Veranda? Aye. Azan says aye. Thank you very much. Good com uh, quality conversation. I'm sure we can have more of these going just forward. This is the not really. I have uh, another Sorry, one. sorry, just a second. I have to uh, talk about it. You can be feel free to talk with Tammy after the fact. Okay. Yeah. All right, folks, then we'll move on to the law enforcement committee charge. Uh, at, at the at the March uh, uh, town meeting, let's all just recall that uh, the town uh, uh, approved uh, up spending up to $68,000 as part of the next fiscal year budget in order for us to explore with the sheriff's, the county sheriff's department uh, office, excuse me, the sheriff's office about developing a law enforcement uh, contract for the town of Guilford. So, uh, last at our last meeting, we charged uh, myself and Chip to develop a charge for the uh, for a potential committee that could get populated, you know, a, a community committee to help us work through this process. And we uh, we produced that charge. It's in our folder, and uh, so we have three potential motions here that we would look at. One would be to uh, approve the charge as stated. One would be to clarify who the among us will be the liaison uh, with this committee. And then uh, the committee has already, uh, the, the idea of the committee is in place. Then we have the notion of the charge, the liaisons, and then we would need to authorize, in a third motion, authorize Erica to uh, populate that committee on our behalf. So, um, Let's start by putting a motion on the table to uh, approve the charge, uh, if we can do that. Is, is there a motion? I shall move. All right, so there's a motion on the floor to approve the charge as developed for this law enforcement committee. Uh, is there a second? I'll second. Michael, thank you very much. Is there any conversation about the charge that we need to have here at the, uh, uh, among the select? <coughs> I think it would be useful just to repeat what the goals are of the committee's work. Would just, you want to read those? Yes, I would be happy to. So this is for everybody who is here because this committee will be soliciting public comment about this issue. I mean, this was like, the select board presented this and, and uh, accepting I mean, voting for this appropriation was something that I personally didn't expect to pass. So the specific goals of the committee's work is to consider and represent various community viewpoints together and review community needs, to work with Wyndham County Sheriff's Office to determine an appropriate menu of services to present a final recommendation to the select board, including a detailed budget for recommended services, budget limit, excuse me, $68,000. And just to say, five, um, five committee members, I mean, the committee size will be five Guilford residents, a quorum will be three of them, the timeline, will be recommendations due by Tuesday, June 11th, and the select board liaisons will be Chip Carter and Tara Cheney. If we approve. If we approve this. I just wanted it to be, Good. you know what we were talking about. Sure. All right, is there any, uh, any, any further conversation here at the select board about this? Well, thank you for your work, Tara and Chip and Zahn, in developing this because it just seemed so um, open-ended that yeah. I was bewildered by how we would proceed. Okay. Well, I hope this will work, and I look forward to, if we pass and we move forward, I hope that there will be good, strong uh, community engagement here. So, uh, All right, uh, so uh, Tara, do you approve the motion? Yes, I. Uh, Chip? Aye. Michael? Aye. Uh, Veranda? Aye. And Zahn says aye. Okay, that is approved. Thank you very kindly. Um, is there any, uh, then we, the second motion would be to the, the select board, and I'll make this motion. I move that we appoint Chip and Tara as the liaison to this committee. 
So they'll be working with the, the committee whose work will be done in open in open meeting as, as all of our committees are done. So is there a second? second that. Thank you, Michael. Is there any conversation here at the select board? Sounds great. Okay. Is there any, I see uh, in the community, uh, excuse me, Steve, uh, Steve Lemke, River Road. Um, has the committee been selected? No. So there's yes. a call, there's a okay. call that we'll put out about that. And is there a time frame for that? To uh, time frame? Let's see, uh, not, uh, no, we don't have a time frame yet. We'll have to develop that. Okay. Yeah. I have a <coughs> question slash. Yeah. Um, I was uh, speaking to the fellow last week, or last time that was here, which is a retired state policeman, mm. Craig, and he brought up a whole lot of points that would be, but as far as like your group of people that you're trying to get together, um, would um, having the state police part of that group so that you would know what they actually cover so that we're not doing like a, mm. Um, mm. we're not uh, double dipping or, you know, right. there's things that the state police cover and that we're already paying for with our taxpayer money. Sure, sure. That there's yeah. no sense in having the um, mm. sheriff's department do the same thing. So if you yeah. brought the state police in on it at some level, okay. would probably be okay. helpful. Thank you. I'm imagining that, that uh, the, the sheriff also would be very well apprised of that same information, but, but it's a good point you're making. Yeah. Well, the sheriff department wants, he's in it, well, he's in it. His is a business. So it's, it's, he's going to, yes. yeah. I mean, so they're well, two different well, things. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Good point. I'm sure the committee will want to um, get input from everybody, including you know, I mean, the a possible role for a constable, you know, these are all things that came up. And I think the committee will really want to draw on community knowledge. All right. Um, let's, uh, let's vote on that. So Tara, are you willing to appoint Chip and Tara to the late liaison? I uh, thank you, Chip. Oh, uh, absolutely. I yes. <laughs> Michael. I. Uh, Brandon. I. As on says I. Thank you very much. All right. Then the third step. Uh, normally, I'll, I'll just say this out loud. That normally, uh, if, if there's internal business and the select board needs to authorize Erica to do some work for us, uh, we don't need to make a motion, a public motion or anything like that. But because this is a community uh, community effort, we want to make sure that the community understands. That, that the select board is, is authorizing Erica in this next motion to um, uh, 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 oversee the population of this, of this committee. There will be a process that will go out before the town and it will be, uh, and the select board will ultimately have to make the, the choice of who's on the committee. A point will have to uh, eventually appoint the committee, but hopefully we can get that done in a timely fashion. So I will make the motion that we authorize Erica to uh, oversee the, um, the, the, uh, the the setting up the uh, of this uh, of this five person committee. I'll so, second that. Thanks, Jim. Like Is there any conversation at the select board that we need to have? Just good practice. Yeah. Just making sure. All right. I think we can go right ahead on this one. Uh, so I'll, uh, uh, so Tara, are you willing? to vote yes. Aye. Thanks, Chip. Aye. Michael. Aye. Brandon. Aye. Zon says aye. Thanks okay. very kindly. All right, folks, that's the extent of our old business. Um, now, under new business, we agreed at the beginning of the meeting that we would start this section with the notice of vacancy uh, consideration that we have to take. We're adding this to the agenda uh, at this time. Uh, it's allowed for us to do this by statute because of timeliness. Um, the, we have the statute uh, prescribes the amount of time the select board has to get a public notice out. And so we're, uh, if we wait till the next meeting, we wouldn't be in compliance with statute. So statute allows us to uh, add this to the agenda, even though it wasn't, it wasn't warned. So, um, uh, shall, do you want to explain all this to us? Yes. Okay. So Leslie Mallon, who has done amazing town reports for the last number of years for us. Thank you so, so much, Leslie. Um, has offered her resignation 
for basically her personal schedule was getting too full um, and, and she requests privacy from the public at this time. Um, but that's, that's the main reason. Um, so with a vacancy in, the, uh, in an elected office, uh, the select board's job is to appoint someone forthwith according to statute. Um, so part of that is to post this notice of vacancy so everybody can, can understand what's going on. Um, so the first part, and this will be posted on the website after it's approved here uh, and around town in the usual places. But it says, uh, pursuant to uh, statute, the select board will make an appointment to fill the vacancy at a warrant meeting. Um, the person appointed will serve until a town election is held. Citizens uh, do have a right to petition for a special town meeting um, to elect uh, someone to fill this, this position. And that would have to be a petition signed by 5% of the legal voters. And that would trigger a special town meeting and a election for an auditor position. But I think the ideal situation would be that the select board does appoint someone. Um, but there's information about citizens' rights there about, about that and information about um, who to contact if you need information, and that's me. Um, we have learned a lot about vacancies in elected office um, this week. So I think we're doing everything the best we can do and, and just write according to statute. So this is the first step, notice of vacancy, and then the select board can go about trying to fill the vacancy um, in the manner they choose, So which um, probably would be the most sensible thing to do will be to uh, post post a notice of, of, of the vacancy and try to see if anybody wants to take the job or to apply for it. It's basically will be like an application for a job. So so does, uh, do folks here on the, uh, on, the, on the select board understand the process as it's laid out? Yeah. Okay. So. Uh -huh. And so uh, maybe I'm speaking too quickly, but would we want to discuss with the current auditors um, the job description? Yes. That, you know, because I feel as if there are, there are certain skills that have been vacated, <laughs> you know, and certain skills that endure. Right. Exactly. So that's my point. Yeah. 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 I, I they may have recommendations for somebody interested as well. Maybe someone's reaching out to them. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to just be really very clear that statute uh, requires that this position be filled uh, forthwith, as Erica said. And that the responsibility for filling it forthwith is in the select is in the select board, um, and if that ha when that happens, the uh, the uh, the position would be filled not to fill Leslie's the to the end of Leslie's term. It would be until the next election, at which time there would be a special election for the uh, for the elected auditor at that point. However, there's also the possibility that the town could, uh, uh, the citizens in the town could, uh, so if we, if we move forward, the select board will go about its business to appoint someone as an elected auditor, as required by statute. It's also possible for the citizens to require that there be an election for, uh, among a number of folks in town, for instance, if, if that were the, the case. And in that case, whoever is elected would fill the remainder of Leslie's term. Uh, so it might be a longer lasting opportunity. Uh, it, it would be more of an effort for the town to hold an election. But, uh, but, the, but in any case, what the select board's doing is an interim situation. And then we would go on from there. So um, what, we're, what we're doing this evening uh, uh, with this conversation here uh, is that we will we're just uh, putting we're, we're complying with statute in order to get this this uh, warning posted 
and it needs to be signed by the chair of the select board. So um, let's get a motion on the table, why don't we? Uh, if someone's willing to move that. Yeah, I move that we um, start the process of appointing a new auditor. Okay. Uh, this, this is the first step. Yeah. Plus the notice of vacancy. The notice That's of vacancy. vacancy. So is that what the motion should say? Yeah, posting okay. notice of vacancy. Yeah. All right. I will second. Thank you. Is there any, uh, Tara, any, any other further conversation here at the select board? Christina has said. Yeah, I see you get there in a moment. Okay, then I saw, I first saw Christina's hand and then we'll come to other folks. Okay. Right. Christina? Uh, hi, I just had a question about if the citizens did want um, the chance to elect a uh, town au auditor, what's the time frame? what are the deadlines? It's totally, uh, it would be, that's a process itself. So the citizens would need to, uh, 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 that whatever amount of time that takes to present that. And then there's a, there, the, the election would have to be done. Uh, the town clerk would have to take it over at that point. And there's a, there's a, a, there's a situation there. And then anyone who wants to run would also have to complete, would have to complete their own petition. So there's a process there. It would probably take a little while to clarify. I have the numbers if you want. Okay, sure. Yeah, so it's, if the select board receives a valid voter back petition signed by 5% of the voters of the town, it has 60 days from the date of its receipt to warn when the meeting will be held. And then the special town meeting date must be set for not less than 30 or no more than 40 from the date that it was warned. So you're right. I mean, essentially, it's yes. Not an overnight process, so it takes some time. It sounds like it's a, a, a probably somewhere three to four months. Yes. All right. Then I saw Patty. In a matter of expediency, why would you not um, give the job to um, Mike Frost, who ran and got 150 some odd votes? Is right. there some you know uh, right. reason for not doing that, and that would eliminate mm -hmm. you know a lot of time and effort. Mike. Yep. Yep. Is Thank that you. a is that on the table? We just have heard about this. We haven't had a chance to discuss it at all, so I wouldn't know what's on the but table. But is that a customary thing? And I'll ask it that way. I wouldn't to you just go so far as to say it's customary. Say it's something we certainly could consider. That could be yeah. nominated. Because yeah. that could would be, be the same almost as a yeah. petition because it would be an elected position. Great. Tammy? That's basically what I was going to ask. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Jason? <clears throat> Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, is could you say what the what does the notice of vacancy actually state? Is it a standard write up? I mean, are we are we requesting someone with auditing experience type deal, or are we? What what is the notice is, of vacancy is, this, say? The, the notice of vacancy. Uh, uh, Erica essentially read it. It's basically uh, required by statute. All it basically says is there is an a, there is an a, a vacancy. The process by how that happens, what happens next is up to the select board. And so we haven't met, we haven't talked about it at all. So there would probably be a process, but that's not described in this. This is simply a notice of vacancy. Thank you. All right, uh, yes. Um, so if you guys decide you're gonna appoint somebody and, and, and you appoint it before, um, so would, you, would you appoint somebody before they, um, say the townspeople wanted to do a special thing? It's what our job. It's, I, I don't know about that. It's, it depends on how quickly the town moves, if the town right. decides it wants to move. It's our job to do this forthwith. So we'll go, we'll start a process uh, that we, that will, we'll, I don't, I don't know what it looks like. We haven't even talked about it. We don't even know what yeah, it looks like. I just like didn't yet. know what fourth width meant as far as yeah. like, are you going to go next week and do it before? Or Could be. Could be. But then I what don't. happens if, if Could, you appoint somebody and the town can to, whoever we appoint the town can the town can um on a point can, well or by holding an election yeah. you might appoint the same person by electing them yeah if it was okay. the same person yeah i just happen to think again back to the possibility of the auditors having a meeting scheduled here in the next week or two without a quorum they can't really do anything with or no, can they, they? Two is a quorum. So they would still be okay. I was just thinking that maybe it would make sense to reach out to Mike Frost and ask him if he would be interested because how nice would that be 
to have someone appointed an auditor in time for this next meeting that they're going to hold, having uh, three of them there thank at you. such an important meeting. Great idea. Yeah. It would be interesting. I don't know that. Have we gotten any information from Mike Frost about, I mean, just did, I can't, I'm sorry, I'm really sorry, but did he put something in the Guilford Gazette about his, I have no his idea. background or, you know, I just haven't, you know, I saw that he was running for office, but I knew nothing about his background at all. And perhaps it would be useful for, you know, people who want to convene, you know, to converse with the auditors to introduce Mike Frost to them and see whether, you know, it has nothing to do. I mean, I want to reach out to the auditors and ask them what their recommendations are for us. And really, we have a very circumscribed role to play in this. So I think reaching out to the auditors with your recommendation and having them sort of understand who this person is and what he could bring to it would be useful. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right. So I, Christina, one more time. Just had a question. Um, I don't know how to phrase it the right way. If you're an auditor, can you be on any other board or committee? Uh, there is, uh, there, by statute, it's all very clearly defined. Uh, on so, our website, uh, it's, a conflict of interest. there's a conflict of interest statement, and there's a, 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 a probably a chart there, some nearby, that Got describes it. what goes back and forth, what's allowed. Yep. Okay. Uh, so, um, select board, were we ready to authorize me to sign this uh, notice of vacancy, Tara? Aye. All right, Chip. Aye. Michael. Aye. Miranda. Aye. Zahn says aye. Thank you very kindly. Uh, so I wonder if there is a way that we could formally thank Leslie. I mean, I realize that we don't have authority over the auditors, but it's just, you know, pretty amazing mm -hmm. what this group of people did, and they certainly acknowledge mm -hmm. what Leslie has done. Yeah, my hope would be lots of people in the community would, speak, would reach out yeah. to Leslie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, folks, the next item on the new business is a policy review. Um, in the, in this, uh, we talked at our last meeting about the potential of doing uh, a policy review and without making any decisions last time, uh, we asked Erica to develop a potential um, justification or a reason a set of reasons for us to to go through policy and and, Eric, and she's done that um i was um and so i wanted to give us an opportunity to talk about it if um if, you know if we if we'd like mm -hmm. uh we don't i don't think there needs to be any um we don't need to make any decision because this would be an internal affair primarily uh, uh, at this point, um, but let's uh, let's see what we have to say. Um, uh, Erica, why don't you just explain a little bit what you've written? Okay, sure. So, so we have um, Guilford has fifteen policies on its website. We we counted eighteen last time, but there are some duplicates. Uh, the personnel policy and our CDL drug and alcohol policy kind of work in tandem, so they're they're one and the same. Um, and there's there's also a document there that is called bylaw versus ordinance, which also has a description of what a policy is, which is really nice actually. And it's it's a course of action, a guiding principle, procedure, or strategy that is adopted by a municipal public body. Policies are executive in nature and are oriented inwards to guide internal decision-making processes. So ordinances have penalties, like speeding ordinances and things like that. A policy is to guide our daily activities. Um, so I just took input. Uh, basically, my methodology was that, um, you know, I, there are some policies that we've been talking about a lot lately. Those moved up to the top, and there are some that hasn't been reviewed. There's a I think the select board in 2013 was very active creating policies, so there's 
there's the new ones that have been worked on over the last couple of years, and then there's a whole bunch of them from 2013. So um, all of those deserve just looking at, and some of them are relatively simple. Some of them are very complex, like our personnel policy, which was just updated a year ago, but still we're always finding ways to make it better and more clear for daily use. So I put um, our select board, well, our Guilford meeting rules of procedure um, and our personnel policy first, just to sort of get us started. Um, in May, we'll start in May <coughs> with this process. Um, I suggested June for the reserve fund balance policy. Um, Tara suggested, um, Tara requested to look at the public records policy, so I put that next in July. Um, our delinquent tax collection policy, I believe Ellie had some, <coughs> some ways to clarify that. Um, and she, she uses that all the time as she sends out her delinquent mm -hmm. tax notifications and kind of thinks about that. Um, our capitalization policy goes hand in hand with our asset management program and a lot of other things too. Um, so you'll see that I put a, a few months of the year, I put two, maybe we can tackle two. Um, some months of the year we can tackle only one. Um, we can adjust the schedule as we need to, but it's just an outline and um, we'd love to hear your thoughts and input. Well, it feels, when I look at it, it looks, uh, it looks uh, uh, impressive. <laughs> and, it'll and, be an impressive and, amount uh, of work. It'll be an impressive <laughs> amount of work for us to, to stay on top of and to, uh, to manage, but I think it's a, it's a good layout and a good, uh, good process here. Right, and something to be considerate of also as we go through this, um, the most recent policy review that our legal firm did for us was for the asset management program policy, which was a, a new policy for them to, to check out. And the cost for the legal fees for that was just under $400. So I think if we do any major revisions on any of these policies, that will also require legal review. So that's something to be mindful of as we go forward. Um, you know, we have, we have updated the personnel policy with little clarifications I think three or four times over the last year that did not require legal review because it was it was pretty simple to do but some changes might be not simple absolutely that's I wanted to uh, I wanted to address that legal review um paragraph and Erica just like read the first part saying the new asset management program policy cost just under four hundred dollars it was a new policy um but then it goes on to say that VLCT offers a policy review service, which may be the first step to use. I'd also like to use our insurance. The town pays a lot of money for insurance and insurance companies have basically general policies. So maybe we can look and see what exactly the insurance policy is saying versus what we have, if it's exactly the same, and then we we feel that we need to do addition, additional things, then we make changes. Um, also, like Erica said, there's gonna be some, like maybe the public records policy or the personnel policy that might be tricky. So, you know, it's possible that we will need some um, legal assistance, but I definitely wanna access VLCT and our insurance company first. Uh, just to, to, to let you know, Tara, uh, those are actually one and the same thing. Our our insurance company is Passive, oh, okay. which is run by VLCT. So I, okay, yeah. So anything that would incur um, insurance needs, uh, they would be on top of it for sure. Perfect. So it's sort of thank you. That's great. Yeah. It's also important, I think, for us to understand if we don't know that VLCT. Uh, is a great place for us to start because they have they have written a number of model policies. Uh, one of the things that's striking about the state of Vermont, from my point of view, is that there are 251 towns, and all 251 towns 
it, without an organization like VLCT could write their own policies. And so what you end up with is this really kind of scattershot approach to policies around the state. So VLCT is over the years has put together some model policies that many towns have adopted and used uh, in order to, so a lot of this is boilerplate in some ways, but a good, strong, uh, you know, well thought through boilerplate, but it's, it's good for us to consider. All right, um, I don't think there's any action um, that we need to take. Are we comfortable um, enough with the, this as it's laid out here? You know? We'll see how it goes and see how yeah. we do. Yeah, I think we just need to be flexible about it. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. At this yeah. point, we need, if we need to adjust the schedule, yeah, yeah, quite possible. Yeah, it so may take us. A, we may the first ones may take us a little while just to get a, a kind of a, 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 rhythm. a rhythm going. Yeah, how we're going to do this. And maybe we could even sort of work out a process for reviewing it. Right. You know, like to look at. Um, you know, clearly we'll have the policy in our folder and maybe having some questions to consider and come up with some plausible answers, you know, uh, because otherwise it just yeah. seems like too yeah. vague a charge. Yeah, exactly. And, and to check with VLCT to see when the last time they updated the that same yeah. policy. Say. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Because um, I I sent Erica to um you know I sort of did a rough draft a rework mm -hmm. of um, using the uh, 2024 VLCT module as well as a combination of Vermont statutes um, to rework the Guilford meeting rules of procedure as well as a Guilford Reserve Fund balance policy. So that would be kind of in line of what Miranda was talking about to you as well as I think we just need to have a review system where we can look at at least two of those would get us ahead of the game, you know, because I knew she just had a massive workload. And then into reference what you were talking about, they are like, um, some of them are boilerplate and some of them like conflict of interest is really short. It was two that you know, just didn't, doesn't need a major rework. Social media policy 2019 was fine, things like that. So it's, you know, it, it is a uh, you know, balanced budget policy. I checked all the statutes, still current, still the same. Uh, the policy was written in 2013, so it just needs a redo anyway because it's 11 years old. But so some of that we would be able to, I think, proceed fairly quickly on it. Just like the reserve fund policy and the procedure policy was a little bit more technical and complicated. So that took some time to kind of rework and redraft. But at least it's something that could be disseminated to everybody here. Right. Well, it seems, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. It seems like more work for Chip is wow. a really good plan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, sure. I mean, I, I wonder if we And could, I just spoon it off on Eric. Well, not well like no, I mean, I'm just thinking in terms of our process to, since Chip has already jumped into you know, familiarizing himself with these policies, if just, you know, in advance of each month's meeting, you would like to... Send them out, sure. Well, just make some uh, talking points for us to be thinking about. Yeah, I did, like day. on the... Right. The, the one in the, uh, like the procedure, I just bold fonted some additions and changes, but I do think, um, you know, I don't want to, you know, be spending money needlessly, but some of it, um, I think, would it's just from a balance standpoint, would be good to have a legal sign off on. Yeah. Sure, and VLC, yeah, right, VLCT can function like that, like yeah. advice, but they're very clear that it's not legal, legal advice. advice. Yeah, yeah they, they'll, they'll be advice, they'll, yeah. they'll be very clear with us whether if we need to seek legal advice right. on a particular issue, and right. maybe yeah. out of the fifteen or so, that could account for three. You know, right. yeah. something, you know, yeah. And, you know, another wrinkle could be added that the LCT comes up with a whole new policy. Right. In the meantime. Yeah. Yeah. I think I'd like to uh, suggest that we um, have Erica be in charge of this of this process for us going forward, but that we all chip, put in uh, good thinking and good planning. And, yeah. and we'll, right. We'll, we'll I agree it, with it. that. Okay, good. All right. Okay. 
Um, I see a hand in the community, but this is a discussion. We're not, it's not a point that we're going to take up. So thank could you. I just, I just want to, I just want to understand. I, I just don't look, I'm just trying to understand. I'm not, I'm not. All right. Um, so uh, we'll move right ahead. To Tom, can we just, can we all agree that the conflict of interest policy was um, worked on and changed in 2023, not 2018? Oh, wait, yeah. Did we change it? It's, it says 2018. I'm not, yeah, I'm not, we talked about it. I'm not sure that we actually changed it, Tara. I'm not sure. That, I thought yeah. we changed a couple things. Okay, well, we, let's, didn't, let's, we, didn't adopt, we didn't adopt A and B, but we actually changed the verbiage. Okay, oh, okay. Well, let's, let's go back through and get that good. Yeah, you sure? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's important on our website to have the the dates of when these are updated, just for this kind of thing, so that we can feel confident about when things were done and and and, and have a sense of whether or not we really need to address something because it's old. That kind of situation. Good. Okay. Um, thank you very much. We'll move on to the uh, Planning Commission committee appointments at this point. At the beginning of the meeting, um, Jeanette uh, Tokar spoke about two committees, uh, uh, the subcommittees, I guess, or advisory committees that the Planning Commission is uh, asking, requesting us to uh, take care of. So um, we've seen that information. Are we, um, I can, uh, let me just find it here, here we go. Um, so, yeah, there we go. So, um, I will move that the um, select board, uh, we'll do this in two motions, all right, so we can um, uh, not um, get things mixed up. I, I will move that the select board approve the appointment of the Algiers Village Traffic Calming and Safety Committee as a committee working with the Planning Commission. Uh, and the five members that are, will be on that committee are Eric Morris, Erica Elder, uh, there are four members, I'm sorry, Sheila Morris, and Jean Eastman. Um, is there yeah, a second? Second. That. second. Thanks, Chip. And is there any conversation here at the select board about that? Okay. All right. Um, I see, uh, oh, it's Tammy. I have a quick question. Earlier, when Jeanette was telling us about the committees and the whole thing, it sounded like they have already been meeting, that these committees have already been getting together and discussing the topics that... So I'm just curious, why, if they've already been doing this, why do they need the select board's approval to say that they're It's required by statute that, 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 that these meetings, that, that, you know, just we, we approve, we have to approve all the committees that are working. We just have to essentially say we know that they exist and that's what we're doing. So even though they've been doing it already, now it's to a part of what they're doing that they have to have the official stand? No, no, not to a part. It's just there's a moment at which uh, the select board uh, uh, just acknowledges that they exist and we're, we're it's, a, it's a kind of statutory requirement for, uh, for that this is so they're, they're, doing, they're be, doing official work essentially but they can be doing that official work prior to this but they have been it so they like haven't done anything the, the official earlier meetings were more process like what what do we think we want to accomplish who wants to be on so in terms of actual work the first meetings are just more mm -hmm. like who wants to serve what do we think we want our mission to be so now that they've been approved i hope they will be approved by select board <clears throat> there'll be more concrete work happening. And also one of the <coughs> reasons in particular that I wanted to have these be advisory committees was so that they would be in compliance with the open meeting law, that they would be very um, accessible to the public about the, because the goal is to have as much participation as people are willing to provide. And so that's the main reason to do it. This is kind of has the official stamp of the planning of the select board and open to all. And please come. Got it. So it's more about letting people know this is going on and we right. want to hear from you. So Absolutely. it's more of a way. Thank you. Moving, moving it into the public realm. I was just trying to understand why yeah. if it's been happening, why is it now we just wanted to be open. Yeah. Got it. Open and participate. Thank you. Uh, Jason? 
see your hand. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for letting me speak on this topic. Um, I'd like to point out a clear conflict of interest with one of the members that you're trying to appoint there, Sheila Morse. Uh, she is the treasurer of the Friends of Algiers. She's the Finance Advisory Committee chairperson for the town of Guilford. She's also the assistant town administrator for the town of Guilford. This study is for to help the Friends of Algiers who own the building with this Guilford store is. I would like to point out and make it clear that Sheila Morse has a has, has a clear conflict of interest to be on this committee and she should not be allowed. Thank you. I just, it might not have anything to do with this, but I'm, uh, I mean, it does and it doesn't. Um, how, how much can you have control when it is a state highway going through there? <laughs> and that's, you probably need to have a yeah. talk about See, that here. Talk to well, that's a big topic hours. for another time, probably. Yeah. yeah. We're just, a, we're just appointing a committee at this point. It's well, a veil of tears. Please come to a meeting. Yeah, come well, to a meeting well, and be I mean, part of the process. Yeah, now that we know that. Yeah. Sorry. My husband knows about that. Yeah. Okay. Eric. Eric? Eric Morris? Yes. Uh, I just wanted to clarify something. It's th this group has not existed yet. Um, we were there was a meeting called by Wyndham Regional, um, and they contacted members of four nonprofit groups that operate in Algiers. So members from those groups got together, and the first thing that was decided was to ask the town to appoint this committee, which was recommended to us by Wyndham Regional, because the, um, there needs to be a town authorized body to work with the state on this program that is being proposed for Guilford. So th right. it's not that it, this has been going on and now we're letting people know about it. This is it. We, we okay. met, we decided we wanted to address this issue and we asked we're asking the select board to create a committee. All right, thank you, Eric, thanks very much. Okay, so let's go ahead and vote now. All those in favor, so we'll start with Tara. Uh, are you in favor of appointing the Algiers Village Traffic Calming and Safety Committee? Aye. Aye, aye. Chip, uh, Michael? Aye. Veranda? Aye. Zan says aye, thank you. Then uh, let's move right ahead to a trails committee which is um, probably working exactly the same way uh, in its activity to date. And here we are acknowledging its uh, uh, a request to formalize this committee. Uh, this committee would uh, have, it looks like, uh, six members, Alex Dawson, Jeanette Tokars, Dale Bassett, Teresa Bassett, Marion Kidd, and Karen Murphy, at least to get it organized. So is there, um, I will move that the select board um, approve the formation of a trails committee um, under the auspices of the planning commission. I second that. Thanks, Jim. Yeah. Is there any discussion here at the select board? It's really impressive how yeah. many volunteers have come forward to work on these things. Yeah. Yeah, it's very, very wonderful. I like the idea that you can all get into different other municipalities and really get a trail network going, you know, that would be, uh, that would be pretty cool. And I know that there's some private owners, that, landowners that would love to have that kind of, you know, ability to have that on their property, be able to access that themselves and let others do it too. So, well, right. if you know of people, can you let Sure, me know? yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, okay, I see a comment in the community. I'm Steve from Green River. I'm just a thing that I've been through a few times. When, did I understand that there would be a, a couple, both besets? Uh, or only yes. Yeah, I, I, I don't know that they're a couple, they but they are. have the same last right. name. Okay. I'm just saying that's a caution because okay. you end up with two people who miss on the same day because they're someplace else. There's a lot of conversation that goes on that they come together with. So, and, and we've had, I've been on committees like that, and we've had policies put in place where that's not what we do. So I'm just okay. raising that issue because it's an immediate hold one. Like Thank you. Okay. That's a good point. All right. Uh, Tara, are you in favor of uh, uh, approving the Trails Committee? Oh, I have a I'm question not... before well, we start. Um, so, okay, um, following up on Steve's um, 
Steve's point, if there is an issue with absence, would uh, would there have to be a formal process of replacing those committee members? By well, statute, there is. The, yeah, statute guides that. Okay, yeah, so, so if if it happens, then the committee will deal with it. And, and the select board has to re has right. to approve okay. any new members. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, can I ask a question as well? Then does that going into it that we get the, with the point that he brought up just automatically teeters to the edge of open meeting law because there's uh, you know uh, just because uh, well if they might discuss it you well know, you know well if there's yeah if there are two of them go out of a friend's house for dinner or you know, <laughs> you know why it's not I mean I get it it's a social setting and they may not be talking about the trails committee but at the same time you know now you've got two and now you've got three or I don't know it's just kind of something to consider uh, let's, uh, I hear that a good yeah. point I mean I, I think it's probably not our business to legislate which of them might right, end up right. being a, so I think that the, the statute requires that any committee that's formed has to have three members this currently has six, so maybe the committee could figure this out Perfect. and sort it out for themselves and, and address those issues. The quorum for such a committee would be four, so even if they were both gone, there would, could still be a full quorum. So, um, uh, so, so take it under advisement if we approve. Yeah. All right. So uh, sorry to interrupt. One more. No. Okay. Okay. That's fine. No problem. This is all good. Um, Tara, are you in favor? I'm abstaining. Okay. No, I'm, I'm an I. Aye. Aye. Aye, Michael. Aye. 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 So that passes. That was a good point. It was a good answer. I like it. It was elucidating. Elucidating. More elucidating. <laughs> elucidating. Yeah. 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 Do a lot of that. All right, folks. We'll move on to the annual. <laughs> <laughs> I'm hallucinating. We'll move on to the annual financial plan uh, to, uh, for the town highways. And well, I'll ask Erica to lead us through this part of the meeting. Okay, uh, so this is a, this is another annual thing we do with eTrans. Um, it's a statutory plan uh, so that they know what our finances are for our highways. And um, they help us by putting together this, um, what is it? It's a TA-60 form. Uh, and it's just got, it's got their interpretation of what our highway budget is and the numbers that they want included are not just our annual highway budget for FY25, but um, any capital expenses that might be included um, or any capital expenses that they didn't add to last year's. So we have um, 17 and change miles of class two highway for which we received 84,801 uh, dollars from the state in uh, aid, aid, state aid to highways. Uh, we have 49.7 miles of class three for which we received $90,780. <clears throat> and so they just total all that up and, um, and add it to our budget so they can have an internal document that where they keep track of things. They keep track of winter maintenance cost, non-winter maintenance maintenance cost, paving. Um, our paving budget is annually $130,000, so uh, that's what they have there, and uh, bridges work. And that's basically it. Um, this is just a statutory thing that they need to, to have on file, and we do it every year. Okay, so we, we need to uh, acknowledge by vote that we have we have seen this document and yes, that we uh, we, uh, we need to accept their their. Uh, so I'll just say here that it's a um, just to be clear that it, it, uh, there's no new information here. It's uh, but it's not our version of our budget. We send it off to the state, and they send us back this statement that says, "This is what we understand. Do you believe this? Do you understand it?" And that's what we're signing. Yes. So there's no there aren't any new numbers. There's no changes or anything. It's just their view of how to how it's stated. Is that a fair way of saying it, Erica? Yes, Perfect. absolutely. Okay. okay. So I I will move that we uh, uh, approve uh, this report this annual financial plan for the town highways per 
uh, VSA, 19 VSA section 306J. And is there a second for that? I second it. Thanks, Chip. All right. Is there any discussion we need to have at the select board here? No. Yeah. Okay, with that. All right, we'll take a vote then. Uh, is there, I see that. Oh, Tara. Aye. All right, thanks, Chip. Aye. All right, Michael. Aye. Veranda. Aye. Zahn says aye. Thank you very much, Eric, okay. for taking care of that. Okay, good. All right, now the next part of the meeting is another discussion, which means that we won't uh, be engaging the community because we're not taking any action. I want to be really clear here that the part of this discussion is about how to engage the community. And um, so we're going to spend a few minutes talking about our meeting format. Okay. And, um, uh, th and it's a discussion that I want to be able to have with the select board members. By statute, uh, it is the chair's responsibility to set the agenda and how that works. And so the chair actually has a lot of control over where the public can be engaged in a conversation. And, uh, but there's also a lot of statute that guides it um, as well. So we've been generally, we're generally, in, you know, I would say most of the time we're in, we'll, we're in good compliance with, uh, with statute. Um, but I would say that as of late, our meetings have not been civil, uh, entirely civil. So I would like to, that's the reason to have this conversation is so that we can attempt to uh, engage the community and, and, and keep moving forward uh, with our work. So um, I have proposed a few uh, items that uh, uh, for our consideration, and uh, I just would like to hear your points of view and, and what you have to say about it. And any community member that's listening to the conversation would like to contact us, can speak with me or anyone about this outside of the meeting, but not this evening during the meeting. So, um, I want you. Um, I'd like to ask just one very important question. Is this other business? No. We're not is, in there yet. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, so, yeah. That was other business. It's, it's under new business. It's uh, okay. Mark D under new business. All right. Okay. Um, so um, I, uh, one, one mode for us to consider is to move forward as we have, where uh, we have a public comment period at the beginning of the meeting, uh, which uh, we allow the community to tell us about events in the community or, or say anything that's not on the, on the agenda, anything anybody would like to let us know. That's certainly one way of engaging the community. Uh, another way is that uh, during the uh, another uh, one option I'm proposing is that we might want to put that that period at the end of our meeting, uh, just as a, a, a and there's a reason for that. Um, it's it's uh, I think there's been some confusion as as I've attempted to understand uh, how we uh, speak about uh, uh, issues under consideration by the by the select board done a lot of thinking and a lot of, uh, uh, you know, advice getting from VLCT and other sources about what it means to, dis, uh, uh, what it means to consider an issue. You'll read in statute that wherever the select board is. I interrupt, but the power cable from my camera died and the battery I have in the backup is about to die too. You might have to take a break so I can switch the batteries out to. All right, we'll take a, how many long, how many minutes? Like one minute. Okay, we'll take yeah. a two minute break so we can adjust the batteries here in the camera. Thank you. Uh, oh, 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 oh. Let's, uh, let's go back. So, uh, so to recap here, or not recap, but to recount quickly, um, the notion of our, our meetings and the formats. The discussion, uh, the notion of... That's <laughs> <laughs> it's Anna Klein. I don't think. Anna Klein needs to be muted. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. There we go. Um, okay. The. Um, Can other people hear? Nope. Can't hear them. Oh. Can they hear us? Just one second, please. Okay. One second. All. All email. Oh, Barry can Barry. hear us. Can you hear us, Tara? Now we can. Now we okay. can. Now we. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I see. All right. Um, okay. So. Um, the question of what it means for the select board to consider business. Uh, consider uh, is a term of art, actually, I've discovered uh, uh, in statute and, and by Vermont law. 
And it doesn't mean that whenever the select board is talking about an issue that that means it's considering an issue. Consider actually means to take a vote and, and to make a decision on a, on a particular topic. So at every point, and we the select board has been good about this, uh, at every point at which the select board is going to be considering a, top, a, a vote on an issue, we always make uh, opportunity for the community to be able to speak to that issue. It's an important part of how we do our business because the community input matters. And so it's important to have it. Uh, I think we need to, uh, it, I, I just want to say that in my research that when the community, when the select board is having a discussion about a topic and does not intend to act on it, that's not the same thing. Uh, it doesn't mean a community member can't speak uh, to us, but that has to happen outside of the meeting because the work of the, of the select board at the moment is getting work done, taking actions generally. But this is also the only time that we have to meet together. Uh, to, to talk about weighty issues, sometimes uh, big issues. So I'm actually suggesting that a, a, a couple of options for us to consider. And I just want to hear your points of view, select board, and then, um, I, then I will weigh it and we'll see where we go. I've looked at other minutes in other communities and learned from other communities about what they do. And one, one option is that most or most uh, courses of business, most votes that need to be taken happen over two meetings. So that there's a discussion period at the select board when the select board talks among itself to discuss issues without community input, but just to, to make sure it understands issues. Then the community would have an appoint, an appoint, a, a possibility of making an appoint, a discussion at the end of a meeting, for instance, and then we would take a vote at the next meeting, at which time there would also be an opportunity for the community to speak, perhaps. Or in some towns, they just they they don't have another time for the community to speak uh, because the community can speak to us because the vote is not going to happen for a week. So that's a or for two weeks. So that's a that's one consideration. Um, it's also true that going forward based on what happened at our last meeting, that, that Eric and I will be much more prepared about uh, if we need to take a, a vote, I would propose if we need to take a vote in a meeting and it has to happen at that meeting, we'll have all the authority and the justification for why that needs to happen at that meeting. Um, and, uh, and, and we go forward. So that, that's an idea. Um, I think the idea of, of having community comment on, on the, the um, on what we're considering could happen at the end of every meeting. It would be a standard part of a meeting and community members could tell us what they're thinking about issues that we've discussed, about issues that are on the agenda or not on the agenda, whatever, but it won't be in the proximity, the input from the community won't be in the proximity of the vote because I think that what we've discovered, what I've discovered too much in my view, is that the, the voting process is, gets fraught uh, and there's a lot of energy from the community at moments like that. So I think we need to just calm it all down and invite the community's input uh, on, on important issues. We'd have it, and then we'd make sure there's plenty of opportunity for it, but it wouldn't happen in the proximity of a vote. So those are a few ideas I just want to lay out there, and I would be interested to have um, reactions or thoughts from the select board, if anybody has any. I like the I like Sorry, I like the idea of having a community comment at the end just to give people an opportunity to speak about something that we've discussed in the meeting. Good. Yeah, yeah it's important. I agree with that, too. And actually, I've, I've been exchanging some emails with the LC attorneys and they, one of the recommendations was uh, to, you know, you could to push it towards the end, which would actually give more relevance to the public comments rather than in the first 10 minutes, you know, now you've got an entire meeting, uh, almost like town meeting where, you know, someone could stand up, make a comment and, you know, that information is relevant and useful. Whereas the first 10 minutes it's over and done. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Any other thoughts? I, I really feel pretty strongly that that the uh, um, 
that we 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 want to make every opportunity for the community to have input, but the community uh, but the input uh, needs to happen in relationship to issues that are going to happen uh, that are going to have votes on them, and and so spreading it out I think is also um, I'm feeling like that's a good thing to do, very possible. Well, in fact, if I as I and I looked over our last year of activity, there were many th many times when just the natural course of our business. Uh, votes didn't happen until two or three meetings later as right. we gathered information, as we had questions, uh, in community input or not. Yeah, yeah it's just the, the way we do the work. Yeah, I think it displays a level of thoroughness, to yeah. be honest with you. Yeah, yeah, care. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes, thank you. Okay, so I see that, uh, I mean, I think in general I support this. I think, well, first of all, as the community comment convener, there are two kinds of community comments. And the kind of community comments, like we're having a clothing exchange on Saturday, that's the kind of thing that I feel is good to have at the start of a meeting. And so maybe what we could do is have some time, you know, when there are community comments about things that are time sensitive and that aren't ponderous, mm -hmm. you know, we could continue to have that as an option for people. Mm -hmm. Also something that came up in my thinking that I think was just a general suggestion was in putting out the agenda for the meeting to have just a little bit more information to go out with the agenda because we have backup information that we have to look at but the public who is looking at the agenda might not know, uh, you know, even have, see where we're aiming. Yes. So even having another line the way that we did for the social services, you know, something like that to be more oriented. And for the rest of it, I really do support having, you know, for the people Look at how many people are engaged here, both online, and we have pretty much a full house. And so having a way to have friendly, or at least, um, I mean, positive in the sense that we're sharing information, you know, that kind of public discourse seems really important to me, and it also might streamline some of our meetings because we won't get so bogged down. Yep. So perhaps uh, after we've finished with new business and before we do the warrants would be a valuable time for community comments. Mm -hmm. I can see that. Another option would be other, you know, again, looking at other communities, warrants are much higher on the list. They're one of the very first things to get done. So yeah, that's what we Oh, option. you mean we might Move the, uh, the warrants. Uh, oh. yeah, much higher in the uh, in the agenda. Oh, how it's fascinating to look. I looked probably at thirty different towns' agendas, and Guilford actually is a very we we put out a pretty meaty agenda. But there are towns that provided more information. There are towns that provide a public preparation packet before the meeting. And actually, Eric and I have talked about that, but wow. it's not something that we've been able to prioritize with everything else that's going on right now. And I, I, wouldn't ask, I don't want to ask Erica to prioritize that at this point. It's a, 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 an opportunity that we might get to eventually. So this is very good. Thank you, folks. Are there other thoughts? If there are, certainly from the community, if you have thoughts, email me. Um, I want these meetings to run well. I want them to run in a very positive fashion for Guilford. And I want them to, I want the selector board to be able to get its work done on behalf of the community, and I think we're, we're we, we can have we can we can do it all. Uh, so if you have thoughts and ideas for me, please pass them along. It will be my job to set set the so there might be some changes on the next agenda, uh, the order, the way we do business, um, taking all of this into consideration. Can I also add just if we yeah. um, end up moving the uh, public comment section, and you know I'm, this is probably not going to surprise you, but I'm a proponent of the five minute per person individual time slot rather than the three. I don't know, I just, you know, I just feel like, and, I'm, and I've talked about it, but you know, I just think first three minutes to me just, I, 
my background as a television anchor, sports anchor was, you know, I did entire sports cast in three minutes, three to three thirty, three to four. So I'm really familiar with a three minute time frame. And it, to me, it just doesn't sound like a lot of time. Uh, three minutes, it just has such a limiting cap to it. Um, second, I feel that most people are going to burn the first 45 seconds of their three minutes talking about what they want to talk about for the next three minutes. And they're not, they don't have a running clock in their head and they just score 45 seconds. Now they're down to 215 and it's no longer three minutes. And then third, you know, people get nervous. You know, I've had people here uh, that just sit in the chair that made presentations at uh, the last select board and, and they're already not used to speaking in public or they're trying to get their thoughts organized and all of a sudden, you know, on, on the backside of all of that, they've got a, they've got a deadline. Um, I think five minutes has a reasonable connotation to it. It's a relaxing time window and it's also a generous time window. I, you know, you look, I looked at the same agenda, not the same as, as Zon did, but you know, the three to five minute range is what's repeated, you know, for the VLCT as well as unofficial SO Secretary of State guidelines. And I think that people always underestimate, you know, how quickly that time is going to disappear. But five minutes, you know, gives them enough time to if you can't get it in, in five minutes, you need to really scale down your thoughts because five minutes is a, it's a generous amount of time, but I think it's more effective than three minutes. And it's in and if we started with five and it turns into something that just isn't workable, you know, as Anna just said, it's fluid. You know, we go back to three, you know, but I wouldn't mind giving it a shot. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other thoughts? All right. Thanks very much, folks. We'll move right on to the uh, warrants then. Okay. So I think we turn to Veranda for that. Scene. Yeah, um, Tara is oh, otherwise engaged. And so I will do the warrant. I move that we pay the following warrant, payable week 331.24 for the sum of $7,600.60. Payroll week 4.724 for the sum of $8,117.94. Expense warrant number 2418 for the sum of $36,739.58. Expense warrant 2418F for the sum of $130.50. Expense warrant number 2418V for the sum of $6,536.83 for a grand total of $59,125.45. I'll second that. Is there anything that we, you want to let us know about? Um, sure. Let's see. The biggest ticket item was for Cargill for $11,061.32 for SALT, and this pricing is a state bid, $7,654.50 for Sir Sosimo, and $1,008 for Zelazny for Gravel, $1,127 for truck repairs at DJ's, and $1,156 dollars for West County Equipment Truck Repair. Those are the uh, big ticket items. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion here at the select board about the warrants? All right, Tara, you approve? Aye. Uh, two. Aye. All right, Michael. Aye. Aye. <coughs> Brenda? Huh? Uh, yes, I did. Yeah, I think, yes. What? Uh, Brando, are you voting? Oh, yeah. Oh, I am. Yeah. All right. Yes. Inside. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Then we go on to other business. I'm not aware of any, so we'll move right. There's I, no. I'd like to ask a question on other business. Uh, okay. That. Uh, all right. Let's see okay. what you got. Um, I was on the ARPA committee. I'm Patty Bullock, Gilfried Center Road. I was on the ARPA committee, and one of the stipulations in the booklet says that when you disperse money to different people, just like a college grant. Um, the people a year later have to give you a report stating what they use the money for. Mm -hmm. Not specifically itemized every penny, but a general consensus of how they've spent the money. That's in the ARPA report, it's a requisite. Mm -hmm. 
And so I just wondered when you were going to be doing this, when you're going to be mm -hmm. having these reports come in and the community would know this. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. We'll take that under consideration. I don't okay. have an answer for you now. No, no, but I think that's a very important question because it's it's been about a year. I know the committee a, was formed. I know there's a there's a requirement there's a yes. requirement for a report at the end of April. Yes. Yes. We're, we're in yes. yes. Can I make an announcement during the sure. business? Oh. Uh, next Wednesday, the 17th, at 7 p.m., the auditors will have a meeting. We'll make an announcement official tomorrow. Okay. Wednesday, uh, uh, April 7th at 7 p.m. Thank you, Paul. April 17th. April 17th. April 17th. April 17th. April 17th. Yeah, this is the uh, okay. that we have Mr. Green. Thank you. Can I ask that. a quick question that maybe other people want to know also? I don't know. Where do you guys post the meetings? You guys just had a meeting? I didn't know about it until after the fact. They're, they're, they're posted on just in the same way all the others are. It yeah. wasn't on Front Porch Forum. And well, I also the, can't... The, 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 the requirements are on the website and the two, and the Guilford, Center, uh, Guilford Country Store and the bridge. Is where the auditors use? That's where they post it? That's what's required by statute. Right. I'm I, asking um, where they do yes, it because um, I didn't that, know that's that. That's a good one. I, let me ask Kathy where she posted. I okay. don't know. Okay. Yes. And then the last the question. Yeah. yeah. The last question would be where do I find the minutes and the video from the Zoom? Because you guys had it on Zoom. So there should be a video or minutes. And I yes, don't know where I to find Yes, I will come back to that one as well. Okay. Right. Thanks. Okay, actions from the previous meeting. Now, just bear with me as we go through this. But the previous meeting we have got a lot done. So we approved minutes of 311. We approved the renaming of South Stony Hill Road. We uh, added elected auditors to a future meeting agenda. We tabled the auditor's engagement letter. We named two newspapers of record. We appointed Chip and Zahn as a subcommittee to draft a charge for the Law Enforcement Contract Committee. We uh, 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 appointed Michael and Tara as uh, to develop uh, work on the select board goals um, for us. We appointed Veranda and Zahn to complete staff reviews. We adopted the road and bridge standards. Uh, we approved payments of warrants and we had an executive session. Now in this meeting, we approved minutes of three of March 25th. We uh, authorized a signature for the professional audit engagement contract. We uh, adopted a law enforcement committee charge. We uh, uh, author we appointed Chip and Tara as the uh, liaison to that committee, and we authorized Erica to populate the committee in the next while. We uh, approved uh, authorization of a, uh, a signature to uh, uh, provide a notice of vacancy for the elected auditors. Um, we um, uh, appointed, uh, we approved the appointment of two committees. Uh, I won't be able to say the first one. It's about sa Algiers. safety. Algiers. Yeah, Algiers, yeah. Algiers, yeah calming. Traffic. Yeah, traffic calming. And the second one is the trails committee. I oh, remember that one. And then we uh, approved the annual financial plan uh, for the town highways for the state. And then we um, also uh, uh, approved the warrants uh, for tonight, totaling fifty-nine thousand one hundred twenty-five dollars and forty-five cents. Um, I don't think we have any other actions on the table at this moment that we moving to the next meeting. So I think the next course of action would be for us to have an, uh, a, motion. a motion to adjourn. I will motion that to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Okay. All right, and Tara seconds it. All right. Is there any discussion here at the select board? All right, Tara, are you in favor? Yes, please. All right. Aye. All right. To Michael and Veranda. Aye. And Zahn says aye. Meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very kindly. Right. We shall see you in a little less than two weeks.